In the last episode, I was able to fully complete and put back together the outer rear end of the car. As you guys can see, everything is exactly where it's supposed to be. Now, what we're gonna try to accomplish today is putting this back in one piece. We had to disassemble the rear end of the car in order to do all the framework, which is now completed. And as you guys can see, we had to rip this out of the trunk. And this is like the first piece that needs to go down in order to rebuild it. And you can see we had to cut it out and it was all torn up. I tried taping it. I, I never put this in the car, but I thought I would just try and see what we got. And that's what's actually in my, uh, my big burger box right here. So what we're gonna do is unbox this, make sure everything is good, and then we're gonna have to fully reassemble the rear end of the car. To catch you guys up to speed, in the last episode, I was finally able to take the Golf R out on the road. Prior to doing that, I actually had to get the car ready. Now what I mean is I basically put the last of the parts onto the exterior of the car. That included fixing and reinstalling the exhaust. I also put the side skirts back on and I even did an oil change as the car has been sitting for quite a long time. Not only that, I even got to do it on Volkswagen's weird plastic oil pan and plastic drain plug. Then for the first time ever, I actually got to give the car a little gas. All that's left now is to clean up the interior for good. And in order to do that, you have to start by emptying everything out of the boot. So we'll do a whole price breakdown in a little bit because I know I've been delaying that, but there's a lot of stuff that's been uh, needing to get done first. Now that I got, this is the last part, we should be good after that. So this should be perfect. And it is. No creases. Well, they'll all come out in a second, but everything looks good. And I think this is probably the first thing that's gonna have to go in the car. The first thing that needs to go in is of course the new trunk mat. With that installed, now I can start to put everything back in correctly. Next, I can reinstall the left and right liners, and then I can install the left and right plastic trims. These have plugs in them for the cigarette lighter as well as the lights, so you need to make sure to plug these in as well. As you can see, the right trim was dented in a little, but with some heat from a heat gun and some bending, I was able to get it back to the right way it was supposed to be. Next is also installing the rubber seal. With that on, it was time to reinstall the rear seats, and this is kind of annoying as there's a metal bracket that needs to be set in place prior to screwing it down. Getting it into the right place is what's difficult as it never wants to seat correctly. I screwed the left and right side latches down with the special triple square tool, and then I reinstalled the bottom trim pieces. Next was the upper trim, the bottom trim, and all the stuff that goes in the trunk. And now I can finally say the interior of the car is assembled for good.
So it's the next day and the rear end of the car, I was able to get everything 100% put back together, which is nuts. I'm opening it up to show you guys. It's pretty impressive to see how far this car has come and where it is today. But let me show you what the rear end of the car officially looks like. So everything is back in where it's supposed to be. All of the new parts have been replaced if there was damage. And we look the part. Everything looks incredible. We even got this that opens and closes when you, you know, you see. I think it's pretty cool. You can see everything is on where it's supposed to be. I know it might be a little too dark, but... The rear end is officially put back together. All the parts and everything you'd need is back here. And honestly, it couldn't have been any more perfect. You can lift this up right here and you have what I thought was a spare tire or something, or like a spare tire kit, is actually a Fender speaker, which is pretty cool if you ask me, but everything is officially there. Now, uh, the last thing I wanna do is pull this outside and uh, clean it off because it smells like weld smoke. And then after we clean up the inside of the car to get that weld, smoke, smell out, whatever else, dirt and grime that's all over the place, I wanna go over this uh, Apple CarPlay. It turns your Apple CarPlay into wireless CarPlay. And a few other things, uh, I was fortunate enough, it's not, I'm not sponsored, but they did send this to me for free to test out, to check out, which is really cool and nice of them. I'll put a link to this down in the description below if you wanna pick one up. They're on Amazon, which is super cool. And then we have to finally go over the build cost update, which is on that whiteboard over there. So I'm excited, but let's pull this car out and get it all cleaned up. out look what I just found in the door if you can see those screws I was looking for those because I needed to put the side skirts on and I had to use the bumper screws because I didn't know where these were and I have a feeling Yuri put them there probably which is fine but I totally forgot I had to buy more to put the bumper on now but that's funny that they're hiding right in there well I was right and here are the other side skirt screws somewhere yeah here they all are that's so funny i had to just buy a bunch of new screws because i couldn't find all of these i was missing eight of these i'm like where'd they go and lo and behold they're in the door so with the car finally clean and i can sit in it comfortably i want to test out this one car stereo carplay ai box you know so they sent it to me i thought it was pretty cool i said i'd review it and i want to check it out so it seems to be pretty cool all around if it does what it says it can do but it comes with instructions we had an instruction manual and we got this one car box you can see here one car stereo carplay ai box pretty big actually which is pretty crazy it's a pretty big box you can see here peel this off oh that didn't peel off there we go all right so that's out of here you can see the carplay box don't seem to be too much to it. We got an HDMI port, USB, and then USB-C. And then I got two wires here. So I'm gonna read the instructions and figure this out, but it should be pretty simple. You know, plug the original CarPlay interface into the thing, click the CarPlay connection. So, all right, so let me connect this first, and then I'll come back to you so I'm not wasting your time. 
So basically what this device does is it transforms your factory car stereo into an Android system, unlocking a world of advanced features and entertainment. It's designed for cars that are already equipped with wired CarPlay capabilities, enabling both wireless CarPlay and also wireless Android Auto functionalities. Now what's even cooler is it's not just for Volkswagen, it's for all types of cars, Jeep, Chevy, Hyundai, Volkswagen, Audi, Cadillac, Ford, and so many more. So check it out. So I plugged the CarPlay device into the USB over here, and you can see it says reading USB device. All right, so I'm pretty sure it's working here. iPhone connecting with Apple CarPlay. The device can no longer be used. All right, so that's it. Well, that was actually pretty simple. So basically, all I did was just plug this into here. You can see I plugged the one CarPlay into the little USB port all the way over here. And then once I plugged it in, that was pretty much it. All right, so check it out. I've connected to the Wi-Fi. It is BT6978. And then I, you know, this is already plugged in and that's literally it. I agree and don't prompt me again. And here we go. This is the new interface, which is really cool. YouTube, navigation, Netflix, literally everything is on here. So I can click Netflix and Netflix should pop up, I think. Oh, check that out. That's nuts. Obviously we gotta be connected to Wi-Fi for that to work, but they even got YouTube over here. That's insane. All from this thing. That's a really cool device. I wonder if this would work in my RS3. Regardless, the fact that this can work in the Volkswagen is pretty freaking cool. Look at that. YouTube is literally pulled up here. Obviously gotta connect it to the internet, but the fact that this alone offers that is pretty freaking insane. Now you can see I have my phone up. I could literally go to a song. Let's say we wanna pull up this song. I can't play this because obviously copyright, but you can see that same song is right there. All you gotta do is get yourself one of these, the one car uh, stereo here, which I'll link in the description down below to pick one of these up and you can get this whole wireless CarPlay. So tell me that isn't the coolest thing you've ever seen here. And while you're over here, make sure to scroll up and click that red subscribe button and make sure you are subscribed to the channel because if you wanna see more content like this and some cool stuff, this is the place to find it by clicking that cute little red button right there that says subscribe. So make sure to do that now, oh wait. All right, anyways, this is a really cool device. I think this is absolutely fascinating and I'm really intrigued. So here is the moment of truth. I have my Audi RS3 and I have the one car stereo. Now, if this thing works in my Audi, then this is absolutely insane. Well, look at that. I'll be damned. I don't think I'll ever expect to see Android pop up on the freaking Audi RS3. That's working. Holy cow, guys. So not only does it work on Volkswagen, it must work on Volkswagen Audi because check, this is nuts, bro. So if you have Apple CarPlay in your car, it can use that multimedia face to then access and create a wireless CarPlay and also give you that user face to access Netflix and all that stuff. So if you don't have CarPlay, this isn't a solution, but if you have Apple CarPlay, which both of my cars apparently do, wired, and you wanna make it wireless, then I highly recommend you pick this bad boy up. It is really freaking cool. Like I said, link to this is down in the description below. Huge shout out to One Car Stereo for sending this to me. But without further ado, it is time for you know what, to go over the board of Very Scary. Alrighty guys, so it is time for the official price breakdown. There is a lot to go over. We've had a lot of parts since the last time that we did this and we are still on budget somehow, surprisingly. Obviously, if you guys were to do this, then things would differ, but for the time being, we've had quite a few parts added to complete the rear end. We have the right taillight, $108, rear apron. So that's the back piece of the car, the big, the longest part was $293 I got on eBay. You know, genuine OEM Volkswagen eBay. Somebody must have bought it, didn't use it, which is cool. The frame rail end, that six foot pole, I got directly from the dealer at Volkswagen, which is mind blowing. Uh, that took a month and a half to come in. And that was only 216 bucks for that massive thing. 
I don't understand. Now, then the actual horn, so that the horn that mounts up to it that you saw Yuri weld with the bracket for the exhaust to mount to, that total was 64. So we have the exhaust hanger, so that's that little red thing that broke off on the old exhaust, on the exhaust. I swapped that and I got on eBay. For $13, we have the exterior rear apron. So that's the part that I forgot. And Sean had to go drive all the way to like, uh, what was it? Uh, some other part in Tennessee to pick up. That we got directly from the dealer as well for $146. We absolutely destroyed the old blind spot radar and bracket. So I got those in on eBay as well. That was $98 for both the bracket and the blind spot radar. And then we have uh, the floor mat, which was $108. All right, so I totally forgot a few things on the build cost, so I wanna do a quick update. The 23rd garage trip, totally forgot to add the truck and trailer, so that brought it up to $25.98 from about $1,700. And then I also forgot to add the rear air vent and the rear bumper brackets for the bumper, uh, which was like 45 bucks total, which brings the new total up to $22,000. $625.41, which still gives me plenty of room to get a few things repainted on this car, as well as get this bad boy programmed. With that all being said, if you're liking this type of content, then make sure to smash the like button, turn on post notifications, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Peace. The new uh, like breather vent over here which i did off camera and even the inside which is locked is uh is all coming together Pull me closer.